Everybody ready? I presume everyone's been furnished with the various materials, uh, particularly the emails that have come to us recently at my request from Santee Cooper, which uh, illustrate, demonstrate, and expose the problem that we have been dealing with, and it is something that, that must end. We have a rogue agency. We have a bureaucracy that is operating on its own, contrary to instruction, contrary to law, and contrary to instructions given by me to the, to the board of directors and the staff as well. This must end. This is not in the best interest of the people of South Carolina. It's not in the best interest of the ratepayers, And it is a, an egregious situation, which I call for a stop to right now at this moment. There are several steps that the General Assembly must take. First, the first step is that the Santee Copa and its, its, its lobbyists and its representatives must obey the law and not be involved in trying to stop the sale or promote the sale or in any way participate in that question concerning Santee Cooper, except to answer the questions given to them by the legislators or other government officials. Their job is not to go out and lobby against the sale of Santee Cooper, which seems to me to be the only way to protect the ratepayers and the people of South Carolina. There's a four, over a $4 billion bonded indebtedness that is out there now. There's no way for Santee Cooper to economize its way out of that. The only way to get rid of that is to raise the rates on the ratepayers, and that will not happen while I'm here. I will veto any, any such effort to raise the rates or allow the rates to be raised on these ratepayers, on the customers. What should the General Assembly do to confront this rogue agency? It must be handled from the inside. As you know, I have attempted to, to guide them and counsel them and, and have warned them from the outside by first removing or forcing the removal of the chairman some time ago and instructions and meetings that we've had here as well as correspondence. But they must confirm the new chairman that I've selected, and that is Charlie Condon. We've submitted all the documents. All the documents are there. I call on the General Assembly, the committees, to go ahead and confirm that appointment and get a new chairman in there who will come in with fresh eyes, an understanding of law, an understanding of the duty and the obligations of Santee Cooper's Board of Directors, and then we will be able to move forward to try to protect our electrical power sources in South Carolina, the future of industry, in business in South Carolina and the customers and ratepayers of Santee Cooper. Another thing, point two, I ask that I call on the legislature to immediately establish the process to evaluate and sell Santee Cooper this session. Don't wait. We've had long enough. We know it's in trouble. We know it can, we believe emphatically, I do, that it cannot survive any longer in the way that it is going. As I said, it's got a four, over a $4 billion bonded indebtedness as well as a $4 billion indebtedness. But we have asked, we have discussed with various leaders, and as of this moment, there is no process to evaluate, to fully evaluate the entity itself or any formal process for entertaining offers, evaluating offers that are being or may be submitted by power companies around the country who are interested in becoming a part of South Carolina business community. So I call on the legislature to immediately establish that process to evaluate and sell Santee Cooper this session. Also, as I said before, I will veto any bill that continues charging ratepayers for the uh, VC summer plant, for the construction of those reactors. And I stand with the House. The House has taken a position that they should not be charged anymore for the past or the future, and I stand with them, and I'll veto anything that does not comply with that requirement. I'll be glad to answer your questions. Yes, 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 no, I'll not settle for anything less, and here's why. The Baseload Review Act virtually guaranteed that rates would be passed on without scrutiny, without objection, uh, into eternity. 
and you have ratepayers, customers out there that are buying power from monopolies. They have no choice to go elsewhere. So when a, the power company adds uh, m a charge to their electric rate, the customers had no choice. Uh, they are required to pay that. The customers, the ratepayers, are not the ones who've gotten us into this mess. It is the poor management of two entities, Santee Cooper and South Carolina Electric and Gas. The customers, the ratepayers, should not be the ones to pay for those mistakes. They didn't cause it, they had no choice, and they should not bear the burden of that. Would the, would the independent audit to, to SP&G and P&I, they said that um, they would not go bankrupt. What are your thoughts on the audit and what, what they found to be true that ratepayers can be get a reduction in their rates? I think that in South Carolina, we are fortunate to have a vibrant, expanding business community our economic development is going as well or better than any place in the country. There will be a great need for electric power in our state, uh, as far as I can see, and industries when they come in now or when they want to expand, whether they are local or from out of state or out of the country, they want to know they have plenty of power. So I think there'll always be plenty of demand strong demand for electric power. I think there are many ways that a company such as SCNG or Scanner can find to stay afloat, to prosper, but not charge these ratepayers for their own mistakes, that is, for Scanner's own mistakes. Mr. McKinney. Uh, you mentioned uh, Mr. Condon's confirmation. Uh, is there a problem on the confirmation? Or yes, sir. Not gotten around to it? No, I just had, well, it, yes, there's a problem. He has not been confirmed. The materials have been there for two weeks, approximately. Uh, every, everything has been submitted. If the if the committees or uh, if the Senate needs anything else, they need to get it immediately. But we have we have filled out all the form. He's filled out all the information. It's all there. It's been there for uh, approximately two weeks, and he needs to be confirmed immediately. And, and what you see happening now is just proof of that. We have a rogue agency that is not following the law. The law does not allow. Santee Cooper to promote or participate in the in discussion about the sale of Santee Cooper. It's not their job. Their job should be, right now, should be finding ways to produce electricity and to reduce the rates on, the, on their rate payers, to find ways to try to protect the rate payers, the customers, as well as the people of this state. They don't need to be involved in opposing the sale of Santee Couple, which I believe is the only way that we are going to protect those people and keep our electric power available. Do you think the state can get a fair price knowing that there's $8 billion, $8 billion a day? The answer to that is yes, because as I mentioned, our state is on the move economically. We have a, a new prosperity coming, we're expanding. Companies, people from all over the world are looking at South Carolina and they want to be a part of it. We, we're continually breaking ground, cutting ribbons, and having discussions with, with wonderful companies. And the, th those local companies are expanding as well. So yes, there will be there's ample uh, demand for electricity. I believe it, it will expand. And there's ample demand to see uh, that the, these power companies uh, power companies in the, the whole southeast region will, will thrive and prosper, but not not on the backs of the ratepayers who are being charged for something that they didn't ask for, that they had no choice about. They had to buy their power, and they did not they did not create this mess. They did not create this this disaster, this um, spectacle, and this spectacle is getting worse and worse as we see that a state agency is deliberately and openly defying not only the law, not only the, the governor, uh, not only common sense, uh, but doing so in a manner the, uh, that is deceptive and is just plain wrong. Did you also call for the sale of scanner in the session before? That will, that will be up to the market. That will be up to the free market. But one thing that I will not allow to happen with the, the the extent of my power is for the ratepayers who've been paying into this fund for these reactors, which today apparently will not be constructed. 
but I do not want them to have to pay for the mistakes of these two entities. Well, Governor, you've made it clear that you do intend to veto anything that includes the yes. continuation of those charges. <clears throat> State lawmakers who have been considering this issue for several months have said, we may have to accept something. If we try to put in something with zero charge for this going forward that has no chance of its passage, would you rather risk that um, inevitability? As I say, I believe the market in South Carolina is strong. I think the demand for electricity is strong. And I think there are ways we have to, we have to think. We have to let the free market operate. And I believe that this can be done without putting this burden on the backs of the ratepayers. It's just not right to charge the ratepayers, customers who had no choice but to be customers, no choice but to pay these bills for two, for two reactors that they're not going to get. They've been paying for them, and the law now allows them to continue paying for them, even though they're not going to get them. That's just that's not right. So, I, it, yes, there are ways. It'll take work. It'll take thinking. But, the, again, the demand is demonstrated by these companies that are coming here and calling. Uh, it shows that there's great interest in South Carolina. There's great interest in, these, in the utility business in South Carolina. Do you think Sandy Cooper should... Yes. Yes. They shouldn't have hired him in the first place. The, the, what what they with no no disrespect to the lobbyists, the lobbyists, the lobbyists are doing what they were asked to do, but the the hiring of those lobbyists for the purpose for which they were hired, as is demonstrated by these emails, is to work against the sale of Santee Cooper. It is not Santee Cooper's business to work against the sale of Santee Cooper. It's Santee Cooper's business to provide power and to do so as economically as possible. That is the beginning and the end of their duty. It is not to get involved in the economics or the politics of whether to sell Santee Cooper or not. In their letter to you, I think Santee Cooper said that these lobbyists have acted against the instructions that they were given, and they said if they do it again, uh, that they will then be fired. Is that a satisfying answer to you? No, of course not. Because we were, I was face to face, guaranteed that the lobbyists had not, would not lobby against the sale or in any way cooperate with those seeking not to sell not to sell Santee Cooper, which I think is the only way to get us out of this mess. But I was guaranteed, face to face, promised in this conference room here not long ago that that was not happening. And these documents show that it was. That is not acceptable. And you mentioned in your letter to them, uh, this investment bank, um, that they have evidently hired to assess um, potential offers. Uh, how did you learn about that, and, and what did that that indicates they are a rogue agency. What is Santee Cooper doing hiring an investment bank to determine whether or not they should be sold? That is something, if the legislature wants to hire someone to make that evaluation, that is perfect. In fact, they should. In fact, that is what I have urged them to do now for months, is to hire someone that can evaluate this kind of a business uh, for now and the future and evaluate it uh, as compared to the different types of offers that we may be getting. That is not Santee Cooper's job. It's not the board's job. It's not the staff's job to retain a company to get involved in that. Their job is to produce power the most economically, and the law says so. The law says they shall not in, be involved in the sale of Santee Cooper or inquire about it. That's what the law says. It's a good law. And this is a perfect example of why that is the law, because here we have an agency that, that is out. It's a rogue agency. It's a bureaucracy. It's been operating, uh, allowed to operate without limits for way too long now. And what we are seeing now demonstrates the, the lack of attention, the loss of focus of their mission that they've been concentrating on the construction of these two reactors like they should have been, then we would not be in this mess today. They need to stick to what they're supposed to do and, and get out of this, this part that is illegal for them to be participating in. 
Any more? Just kind of off topic, um, about Solicitor Dan Johnson, uh, just wanted to get your reaction if you've been following that investigation, what your take is, I know you're limited what you can't say. Uh, I've, I've seen what's been in the news. I, I think there are a lot of questions that need to be answered. Do you think our solicitors need more oversight just across the board? I just, I think that's the well, they, they are uh, subject to uh, some some oversight uh, by the voters, of course, but uh, I think there's some important questions that need to be answered. Any more? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.